Hey guys, it's Trackleton. You know, my computer was recently wiped, partially by my own doing, and I decided to take a step back and to reset up all of my Firefox profiles. Now, I'm a big fan of Firefox, but what really irritates me is the nagging little things that Mozilla adds and turns on without my permission. Since the making of my last video, Mozilla added a weather widget in the new tab page, which I don't remember asking for. Also added more links to ads and sponsors, which I didn't ask for, and made everybody angry by consulting a lawyer for legally binding terms of service, which was honestly pretty stupid and not worth talking about. Now, this is also a problem with the situation of modern web browsers, and I get questions all the time of people asking, well, why don't you use LibreWolf? Why can't you use something like the Zen browser? Well, the reason why is because forks of Firefox are typically very poorly maintained, slow to deliver updates, or introduce problems in addition to the aforementioned problems of Firefox. Now, the road to configuring Firefox, I will warn you, is very technical and requires frequent maintenance. And you should know by now if that is or isn't for you. There's great things like the Mulvad browser, which I've done a video on. And if you're an Android user, there's also something called Ironfox, and you can use that too. Because today, we're going to be talking about the Arkinfox user JS because this is where you can learn how to properly configure Firefox. Now, there are lots of other projects that configure Firefox, like LibreWolf, but what they often do is they pull directly from Arkinfox's user.js. Firefox stores all of your settings in what's called your Firefox profile, and it's a folder that stores various settings about Firefox, like your bookmarks, uh, websites that you visited, or even just your login information. Next, Firefox's settings are stored in a prefs.js, which is a JavaScript file, but you can't and shouldn't change this file at all. And the reason why is Firefox is constantly touching it. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to write a basic JavaScript file called a user.js. And this is going to configure the prefs.js with all the desired changes that we want. And it also enforces them and overwrites them without tampering with the actual file. Now, the Arkinfox user.js is the most consolidated out of all of the user.js files that you will find on the internet. Because in addition to normal Firefox user.js, Arkinfox lets you configure it using a user overrides.js, which lets you overwrite Arkinfox. That's right, what you're going to be doing is you're going to use your user overrides.js to override your user.js, which overrides your prefs.js. It's an override of an override of an override. And this is also why you can ditch any clone of Firefox altogether. The benefit of using the arkinfox.js is you get to use Firefox configured the way that you want, with strong security defaults and with a lot better settings than what it used to be in the past. Then the user.js will forcibly overwrite any setting in Firefox, and it also blocks incoming settings and undesired Mozilla features. And this, in my mind, is why most Firefox clones are obsolete, because you are the one taking the initiative to fix Mozilla's problems. The major reason is you do not have to trust anyone beyond the people who work on Arkinfox, where many other Firefox-based browsers already take their work from. Arkinfox has actually taken a lot of previous feedback to heart and re-enabled many features that lots of people expect. And it's so good, I've changed practically nothing. But I have still included some preferential options for people who prefer to use Firefox in a different way than it normally is out of the box with Arkinfox. So with that out of the way, let's download Arkinfox. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to visit the Arkinfox user.js GitHub, and you're going to download the zip file containing the entire repository. Now to get to your profile folder, the first thing you have to do is you have to navigate to about colon profiles in the URL bar, and then there'll be a big list of all of your Firefox profiles. And if you see one that says cannot be used, that's probably the one that you need to modify. So once you've found that profile, there'll be a little thing in the table that says root directory, and then a button that says open directory. And there's going to be the profile folder for your Firefox profile. Next, what you're going to need is you're going to need to copy over the files user.js, updater.sh or .bat, or 
prefscleaner.sh or .bat, and make sure that all of those files are inside. And each command that you'll see is actually a value that's included in Firefox's about colon config. And I've included mostly common options that would concern most people. And you'll notice that each command is enclosed in a user pref JavaScript uh, thing. I'm not a programmer, I don't know what these are called, but basically you'll find the values in each one of those. Whatever's inside needs to match whatever is in Firefox's about colon config or expects. A lot of this isn't very well documented, but Arc and Fox tries very hard to document all this for you. And if you want to enable a specific feature that I've included in my user overrides.js, all you gotta do is delete the two slashes in front of the user underscore pref, and then you should get what you want. By default, Arc and Fox fully disables the home page and the new tab page. This is because Mozilla continues to include stupid little annoyances like Pocket and the Weather app in the new tab page. Additionally, Arc and Fox also disables an internal service that saves your session when you close Firefox. Now, especially for people who are coming over from Chromium based browsers or like Google Chrome, uh, this can be a little jarring and probably a little annoying. <laughs> So I've actually added settings to uh, re-enable these, but you can no longer change them in the menu and you have to do them through your JavaScript file. This is because in order for your settings to be enforced, they're basically just being enforced through the three overrides, right? From the user overrides and then being pushed down to user.js and then being pushed into your Firefox. <laughs> And speaking of session restore, Firefox has very robust data deletion, which has actually recently got an overhaul. And if you've done changes like this in the past, you will need to go in and change these values. This can include anything like cookies, your browsing data, website cache, uh, your Microsoft Teams messages, everything. <laughs> and Arc and Fox actually includes a special recipe specifically for the people who want session restore back uh, in your Firefox, or if you want more control over Firefox's uh, privacy settings or auto deletion. Now, if Arc and Fox's configuration, all of your logins are deleted by default. But hang on, before you delete it, and unless you really need something like session restore, I'm going to ask that you don't touch these at all. Instead, try to take this time to learn how websites store your data and how Firefox can give you more control over it while deleting the data that you don't need and saving on some space. Now you can do this on any website and the w example that I'm gonna use here is you can use a website like say YouTube, for example, and you wanna go to YouTube and you wanna visit the page that you usually log into, which is usually the Google login page. Now, when you visit the Google login page, if you close your Firefox now, your data is going to get deleted. But let's say you wanted to save your login so you don't have to constantly log, at, log in over and over again every time you open Firefox. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to open the website specific settings in Firefox by pressing Control I. If you're on a Mac, you got to press Command I. Next, if in this window, you are going to navigate to the box that says permissions and then a box and a table further down it says set cookies and instead of the default setting which is delete you're going to select allow this way you can save your logins and your site data without touching your arc and fox configuration and have your cake and eat it too by deleting all of that browsing data that can be used to track you or if you just don't need it because it's taking up space on your computer Arc and Fox by default disables the new tab page because it's a common vector that Mozilla uses to deploy unwanted links and experiments on you. But I have encountered some folks in the wild who prefer this, especially because it's very close to the workflow that they experience on more traditional browsers. So you can re-enable it, but be warned, you might have to deal with some Mozilla stuff that you probably didn't sign up for, especially if Arc and Fox hasn't gotten to it yet. The other thing we could also talk about is search engine suggestions, because some people would prefer their URL bar to be their search engine. Now, by default, Arc and Fox will disable all predictive search, but if you set the values for browser URL bar suggest and browser search suggest, you should be just fine. That's my user overrides.js, so you can actually add your own custom values here. For example, if you wanted to add uh, Mozilla's tab grouping in by default into all of your profiles, you can configure this here by adding that value. Just typing something into a user overrides.js isn't enough, because what you need to do is you need to patch those user overrides into your user.js to install it into your Firefox. 
the first thing you need to do is you need to close Firefox because you're going to be modifying all of your about colon config configurations in bulk using the terminal. Arkin Fox has listed over 5,000 different lines of just completely random things that Mozilla has in the browser. With that in mind, you don't want to have to go in and manually change each and every one of those settings. And this is another reason why you write a user overrides.js. So what you're going to do instead is you're going to have a script that's going to go in and patch those values at the bottom of your user.js file. So the next thing you need to do is you need to open a terminal on your computer. So this is PowerShell on Windows, terminal on mac os or the terminal in your linux distribution and then you're going to run the following scripts by running them in your terminal the easiest way to do this right now is to drag and drop the script in your firefox profile folder into your terminal and hit enter and that will run the script the first one you're going to run is the script prefscleaner.sh or .bat when you hit enter, it's going to present you with on-screen instructions telling you that it's going to clean up your Firefox configuration file. So that way there's no conflicts that are created with the user.js file. To do that, hit one and then press enter. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to run updater.sh or updater.bat. This is going to make a backup of your previous Firefox configuration, not your user overrides, but it's going to update your user.js with your user overrides. And then after that, you should be good to go. All of your tweaks from your user overrides are there. Mozilla has been completely cut out of the situation and Arkin Fox disables all of Mozilla's pesky web-based services and telemetry. But you'll probably notice that how come Mozilla accounts are still here? How come Pocket is still here? I thought we were removing all of Mozilla from the browser. Fun fact, Capturing network traffic using something like Wireshark or Lulu or OpenSnitch shows that Pocket or the Mozilla account service never attempts to call home on the network, except when you interact with it, of course, but I think that's a given because they're internet-based services. Any changes that you make from here on out are purely cosmetic or based on preference because some people would prefer to log into their Firefox account so they can save their bookmarks and stuff or transfer them to their phone, things like that. The other thing to keep in mind here is you'll notice that Google is still the default search engine. And this is because search engines are not configured through Firefox's about colon config. So there isn't a setting for it, but you can still change this to be whatever search engine you want. And you can also configure your tab bar. So if you want to do things like vertical tabs, again, these are independent of Arkin Fox and they secede that to you where you can just click in the settings like you normally would. The final thing here is you might think that you're done, but you're not. Because the other thing to consider is what if Firefox gets an update? Well, you should be prepared to return to your profile folder again and run the scripts again by drag and dropping them into your terminal or typing them all in and doing that every single time Firefox or Arkin Fox receives a new release. Now, a good way to manage this is you can make a shortcut on your desktop or somewhere else to the rear profile folder so you can come back, just you run, open your terminal, drag and drop the scripts again, give them a good old run, and Firefox and Arkin Fox are now fully up to date. But the other thing is if you have multiple Firefox profiles like me, so for example, I have six Firefox profiles. So yeah, I need to repeat this process for every one of them. But I do have a script which basically runs in tandem, in sequence, every single script in order from pressCleaner.sh to updater.sh essentially six times each on every single profile because yes i'm a crazy person but the best way to track uh, updates to arkin fox is to subscribe to the arkin fox github feed you might ask how come mozilla doesn't have an rss feed the answer is i don't know they have one for the alpha releases or the nightly releases of firefox but they don't have one for the current normal version of Firefox. In order to get those updates, you need to subscribe to an email newsletter. <laughs> wow, I didn't know we lived in the early 2000s. <laughs> so I'm going to tell you instead to subscribe to the Arc and Fox RSS feed. No email required. All you need is an RSS feed reader. I'm not going to get that into detail here, but I made a video about it previously. You can watch it here. And finally, once you have mastered all of this, you have configured Firefox and you have eliminated your need to rely on any clone of Firefox that might try to take its place. 
because now you control your own Firefox and you can now control your own destiny. Just like you can control your finger by tapping the like and subscribe button. If you like this video, you might like to learn about all the wacky Mozilla things like the custom CSS. Because did you know you can configure Firefox's appearance? I've actually never done this in my life because I don't customize literally anything on my computer except crazy Firefox user configuration files. And if you're interested in anything that I've said in this video, it is included as a transcript and it's also fully interactive. So if you wanna see step-by-step -step each command or how I wrote my user overrides.js on how you can run it yourself. It is also in written form, if that is easier for you. So that way you don't have to scrub through the video and pause it. Everything is there. And if you are interested in supporting the work that I do and pray that I don't delete my website again, you can give me money through Patreon, YouTube memberships, or cryptocurrency. <laughs> With that being said, Thank you for watching this video, and I hoped you got to learn a little more about Firefox today.